Now, on the previous episode, we talked about the potential issue of the bore. So we're going to receive it. Either we stay 1800 or jump to 84 millimeter and go 2 liter because we're going to stroke this with an ITR crank like this is going to be so good. And of course, now we're going to update you guys with the current status of the head. Yes, it's almost done. But of course, even better, compare the air intake manifold to, to the ITR style Skunk 2 Pro Series intake manifold. And you will see the difference is going to be drastic. So you know, this one is just right up your alley. Because the B16B block is on its way to the machine shop, here's the key 24. We moved it on the engine stand closer. And here's the B20 VTEC of owned by Mac. It's almost done. It's actually, we're just waiting for the car to get finished. So now let's head to the workbench. Let's talk about the cylinder head. Let's go, let's go. Now here it is. It's 95% done. It's almost there. Just a few more, more little details that I would like to do and finish this up. Yes, sir. All right, so now let's go look closer to the ports. Here you go. As you can see, it's not totally hogged out. This is to emulate or to promote higher airspeed. This way, it lets you run the bigger cam or the biggest cam you ever want to run without sacrificing the mid-range. And of course, the top end, the, the size of the cam will dictate that right and of course even the intake manifold and we know this one has no problem with the intake manifold so it's gonna be really really good yep all right now let's go to the exhaust yes sir just like the intake here and the exhaust we're also almost there almost not yet finished but almost let's get closer here we like to use the light against this to show us the glaring on the surface, you would see if there's any inconsistency or unusual bombs, and it helps in my book, you know. Like you can see, the contours are all streamlined well. Yes, sir. All right. This is going to promote good exit speed. And that's actually a big, big factor in increasing volumetric efficiency because we can all make the intake go really good. But if it doesn't exit the spent gas as well, then it's just going to get, you know, pent up or like, you know, clogged, right? So this is going to be really good. And here's the reverse angle so you can just see it when it's actually installed. Yes, sir. It's going to be really good. And that's the common thing I've noticed. It's like everyone just focuses on the intake, like intake manifold, intake ports, and then just, you know, just make sure the exhaust is okay. But when you think about it, the exhaust actually helps induce more air by way of scavenging. And so the better you can prepare the exhaust port to match a good header and exhaust system, that's gonna be really, really good. It's gonna make good power and excellent efficiency. Now let's go back to the head and talk about something. Let's go. Okay, here, as usual, we cut a new intake gasket from a folder, of course, and try to, you know, get this match really good. So we go, you put this or install this carefully because you don't want to tear it up. So you up little by little and wait, we're actually going to time lapse this because it's going to get too boring. There you go. Okay, now we put in the air intake manifold. This is why we cut it slightly bigger around the perimeter of the flange. This way, look. Let me grab a pen here. Regular pen, of course. We're going to scribe a line on the outside. This way, when you take the manifold off, you can actually use a nut and bolt to secure the intake gasket to the flange the way it matches when it's installed on the head. All right, let's go to the front side. All right. Okay, now we remove the manifold. The intake manifold that is 
all right and here you can see the lines the outline is scribed this way when we remove it we can use a nut and bolt to actually align this property to the intake manifold on how it was or how it is supposed to be when it's installed on the cylinder head this way you can see if it's matched well or not well right okay now here let's go back to the air intake manifold all right and here let me show you close the air induction research yes sir all right here you can see wait let me get it closer hold on okay there you can see wait there it's carbon fiber on the inside so you know you can actually port match this a little bit but i'm actually planning to not touch this i'm just gonna check on the intake gasket that we made i'm gonna trace this and cut one and then make another one that's going to be traced on the head this way i can compare and actually can figure out the compromise on the cylinder head that's gonna work yes sir even the throttle it's 68 millimeter so you can't really go 70 all right so the owner i asked the owner to get this and so he got an original skunk 2 billet throttle body that's 68 millimeter so now we're gonna test fit this it's gonna look really really good and clean yes sir okay now we go time lapse this because it does make sense, you know, the billet throttle looks better than just cast on the air induction research intake manifold. So here we are. Yes, sir, you can see it's perfect. 68 millimeter, it's completely matched. So this way, this is the ideal size throttle body or the correct size for the intake manifold. Yes, sir, it's gonna look really good now. And so, as I showed you how the manifold and port matching, I, I shared the video, the other video on a group in the in, in Facebook. And I, I saw some would comment that they don't know why we have put the blue ink on the intake flange. It's to let us port match and scribe a line. So to that dude in Facebook, if you don't know, well, you don't know. So let me go back to this old image. This is the PCT pistons of the B16B. So we cleaned it up and I'm just glad that I didn't start weighing them or adjusting the weight to be equalized and all that because now the owner is actually considering going 84 millimeter with the Edmel Darton style sleeve because he also just got this as a reserve he says but hey you know that's crazy because wait we might as well use it right the only downside now is it might take two to three weeks to do that and my worry is you guys because you know i usually update the each season or each series every week so now what you guys have been waiting for let's compare the air intake manifold to the ctr style skunk 2 pro series intake manifold the china version because a customer sent this to us to port match for their head but you know it's been here for a while so we're going to use this example sorry sorry about that no let's fix this sorry the hand rubbing alcohol all right as you can see look at the plenum of the air cf intake manifold it's huge it's actually bigger than a victor x but the runner is almost as long as the type r so we know that's gonna work really good so now that we let's flip this to show you guys there you can actually see how huge the plenum is okay and all this one too look at that the throttle bore looked big on the type r version oh, it's dusty it's been here for a while sorry 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 but the 68 millimeter doesn't look so big on the air cf manifold because the plenum is quite large yes sir that's looking really really good look here in the back side on the other side oh yeah yeah so we know which one is gonna work even better okay, let's tilt this on the side like this and also this one so now let me show you guys the rudder taper 
because you know i part the runner is really good right now let's look at the side profile of the intake runner oh yeah look at that taper that's amazing yes sir and this we know is gonna pack tons of airspeed and that's gonna create more torque and this one here the type bar style it's not that it's bad it's not it's just that this is why whenever I port it with more taper, it improves drastically, actually. So we know the air intake manifold is going to do really good. It actually is designed to do well. And look at this. You can see that. This is why I port the runner entries like a velocity stack. Look at that. Air induction research really, really knew what they were doing, right? Yeah. And here I want to try to show you guys the runner entries. Let me try and put the light by the throttle entry. Oh, sorry about the glare. Wait, can't get the angle right. Oh, there. You can actually see that's a velocity stack entry. Oh, yeah. Look at that on all four. And, yep, it's not knife edge, right? That's going to be so good. That's, uh, this is actually why this performs really well. And one more time. And maybe that's why T1 or T1 race development actually used this on their Integra, on their DC2 that kept running records, right? Yes, sir. Now, let me show you something interesting. As you can see here, as it passes number four runner, the planum expands and slows down air. This way, it just feeds everything good, including runner number four. But this part, you can see with the 68 millimeter throttle, the plenum expands gradually and properly. And so when you think about it, when you got the 68 millimeter throttle and the intake pipe here that's three inches, that's a vena contracta because the 68 millimeter is actually about 2.6 or 2.7 inches. So it's three inch, then 2.7, and then expands the plenum. This is eventually or actually feeding the plenum via a Venturi effect that is efficient as heck right and because of the runner here this now skunk 2 didn't do this to beat the air intake manifold they actually did this as a development step up or a step forward compared to the itr style intake manifold their pro series and you can see velocity stack entry sorry yep oh this one performs really good and you can, you can see you can actually it's modular so you can actually add a spacer to increase blend of volume so this is crazy good you know and actually the b16b owner this b16b owner has a friend who has a two liter that runs the ultra street manifold and stacked up spacer enough to give at least maybe 2.5 liters more plenum volume so when you think about it that is a smart smart way to improve power on the build right yes sir now going back to the pct pistons i'm just like i said i'm just glad that i didn't start adjusting the weight here because now at least it can get sold i mean if i started adjusting the weight that's fine i'll have to finish it but then you know that's not doesn't make sense charging that so i have to do that for free right so that's a hassle but hey this one can be sold now because it's in good condition and as soon as i get my hands on the one up pistons i can start weighing them getting them close to identical or actually identical weight so that means next up, we're going to focus on balancing the connecting rods end to end because we haven't finished it. And we actually have to finish all the small details in the connecting rod and make it all ready to make good power and efficiently, of course. Here you can see we have to actually refinish this to how we want it or to get it to where we want. So that's going to be good. We're going to be balancing the one up pistons and show you guys. And of course, once that video gets ready and done, you can also click that here.